here's what here's what I would want to express to all those who are turning their eye towards our institution. I think it's very reflective of what's described as godly wisdom in James chapter 3. What's happening in this space. Pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, full of good fruit, no impartiality, no hypocrisy. If the world sees us, that's what I want them to see. The presence of God. Alrighty, if you have been living under a rock within the Christian community, you may not have heard that there is a revival that has broken out in Wilmore, Kentucky at Asbury College. It started as what sounds like a normal chapel service last Wednesday, which is February the 8th, I believe, but it has continued nonstop since then, almost a week later. It's garnered the attention of the Christian community around the world, and even secular news has been reporting on it as people have traveled from all over to get a glimpse of what God's doing there in Northern Kentucky. One of the people involved and that has been traveling back and forth and is joining me today is Josiah Gardner, who graduated from Asbury just this last December, the worship arts degree and a minor in audio production. He's currently working at Georgetown Church of the Nazarene, which is about 45 minutes away from Asbury, the epicenter of all this craziness. So Josiah, thank you for coming on Faith and Focus to give us a rundown of what's going on in Kentucky. <laughs> um, Josiah, I have never met you before. This is the first time I met you, but I work alongside your folks uh, uh, within faith. So I'm, yeah. glad they, I'm, glad they, I'm glad they put us uh, in touch because I, I would like to have traveled down there myself to see what's going on. But I guess the second best thing is to maybe touch base with somebody who has been there. So let's just start with that. What? What in the world is going on in Kentucky? Yeah, time? so yeah, like like you said, I I just graduated Asbury and um and got a got a new job just 45 minutes down the road and um it's it's funny because I was looking for an excuse to go visit friends and <laughs> and the first the first weekend you know you get you get a new job it's kind of it's you know things get long you don't really know very many people and so it's good to connect to to old friends and things and and then over a group chat I was probably texted by like five six different friends from Asbury saying hey like like the the very the very next day like hey come check out Asbury's campus because there's something is broken out and mm. Like just that's not something that that happens, you know, you don't get texts from like five or six different people on the same day unless something's like, you know, a pretty big deal. Sure. So um, so I thought it was pretty, pretty cool. And and so um, that coming weekend went and visited and um, just all sorts of just uh, organizations, uh, people from all over were visiting. And um, I know families of students from um places from all over the US uh were coming down to visit and man it's 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 definitely um something new that that as that God's doing at Asbury and <laughs> like definitely not something we had uh expected or planned so yeah that's that's really cool so how did you uh get in touch where did you grow up did you grow up i think your folks are in minnesota are they not yeah how did you did you just throw a dart at the map and yeah, so you're Asbury. Let's, uh, let's, let's go there. No, what, yeah. what drew you there? So, um, I had an older sister who had graduated from Asbury. Um, well, she has now, but um, I guess she was in her second year um, by the time I was looking to um, apply to a college. And um, and so um, our connection was we had a band teacher who met his wife um, down at Asbury, and so. Um, that was our connection, and my sister, she she had been at college for two years at Asbury by then, and then um, told me to check it out, and I did, and um, and liked the program that they had, and um, so I was a worship arts major at Asbury. So, yep. very cool, very cool. So, um, I have been to Bible College. Typically, uh, chapel is you don't want to say it's the most boring time 
Uh, but a lot of the times you find excuses to not go. You maybe sneak out a little bit early. You know, I'm not going to ask you to indict yourself on any of your opinions on this. But, but so this is obviously outside of the norm for college students to oh. to just continue going. I mean, I'm assuming Asbury is probably the same. That it's like, all right, we got to go to chapel. All right, chapel's done. Let's continue on. But they've just been all the videos that I have been seeing on Twitter and stuff have been there in the chapel has it has it been they've said it's been you know whatever 100 plus hours or something like basically non-stop presumably people are leaving to get food and and, and bathrooms and stuff right. like that but oh. and to sleep but then they're coming back is it is it going all night long where there's some people just even at night staying through the night and absolutely all night and um and uh it's funny because the weekend I stayed, um, I stayed the night. Um, what me and some friends did was we, uh, we, we went stargazing, me and a bunch of friends, and uh, just right in front of Hughes and just watched as people would walk out of the building or even come in. And, and it was just hilarious. Like, I mean, I saw, you know, little you know, little kids, six years old, walking out at 1.30 in the morning. And I'm like, what are people doing this late? You know, like, um, yeah. it's just not not anything that you would expect. And um, I mean, I, I think it's I think it's really cool. And um, I, I couldn't I couldn't stay up that late. But <laughs> yeah. but some people some people are sticking it out. And I heard a worship team played for six or seven hours throughout the night. Uh, wow. Just one single worship team. So wow. um Yep, they're doing they're doing that. Yep. So what's the what's the atmosphere? You step into the well, you step onto the campus. How much can you can you give me a feeling of what it's like when you get onto the campus? Is it mm -hmm. is this mostly contained to the chapel, or is there kind of been a? I mean, you you were there for four years, right? Yeah. Yep. For your program, so you're there for four years, and you know that's probably not much different than most college campuses or Christian college campuses, maybe, but you know, is, is there a noticeable difference on campus? Is this spread throughout, you know, you go to different dorms, you go to the, wherever the cafeteria oh, or whatever, like it's absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So, um, I was, I was talking to some friends and, um, and I, I asked him the same question. I was like, so what's like, like, has, has it impacted campus? Has it impacted things like that? And, and some, some things they said was first, some classes are being canceled. So it's like the, the teachers have lightened their load, but that's from just like a, a work standpoint and a, and a college student standpoint. But uh, something else they uh, noted was um, that people are being more open than what they typically saw. And from my perspective, so I had just graduated, you know, and, and, and from my perspective before this semester, you know, had, had, uh, even started was I, I saw Asbury as a very open community already. Mm -hmm. Um, and obviously some people they're, they're not, you know, it's, it's like any college. Some, sure. some people are going to be invested into the, the campus life and some people aren't. And, um, but, but something that they thought, uh, the difference was, was there were a select group of students who were always, you know, fairly open and, and usually like those would be the, the Christian, you know, Christian students who are pushing to, um, you know, really uh, continue to bring, you know, Jesus to the campus. And then there were others who weren't there for that reason and which is okay. We're, mm -hmm. we're, we're not, you know, all a completely Christian uh, student group. So, um, but they said that the students who are more closed off, before seemed to be more open um, this semester. So I thought that was really cool and, and interesting. Yeah, so that's an interesting point. That would be a little bit different than, I mean, not to say that, you know, the Christian college that I'm familiar with, I'm sure that there are people there who weren't really Christians, but you at least, on when you apply, you know you're going to specifically a Bible school. Um, so Asbury does kind of have, and it's, is it not, does everyone there at least kind of nominally claim, yeah, I kind of like Jesus a little bit, or is it just basically open? Like, Hey, this might be a, a Christian college with Christian values, but some people just go there. Like I, I don't profess to be a Christian, but, would, but they are even like, no, you know, it's even impacting these, these people too. Yeah. I would say the second one 
of what of the of the options you listed because there are some who are there solely for sports there's some that are there solely for um you know any t any major so um and and there's there's groups that that and and asbury welcomes those people and 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 that's that's what that that's what they're very open and, and honest about that and even in, in chapel they they try to acknowledge that there are students who um, don't necessarily believe in jesus and that's okay so sure. um so and 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 like just going back to the last question some people have been more open um to to at least rethink um, some of the things just because of what God has been doing uh, on the campus and um, and then the things that that just we had never expected or seen um, kind of happen at Asbury. So, OK, so you, you step in now into the chapel that was kind of like the epicenter where all, you know, the everything's kind of centered around. Is it everything that I've seen? It's It's not like chaotic that sounds like it's it's just like a kind of you know subdued you know there's not people running around screaming their heads off and stuff it just it just seems like it's it's very you know I, I've seen pictures of people praying I've seen pictures of people kind of kneeling up front you know the, there's people up there speaking like what as you go through a normal day obviously if the spirit's moving and working there's probably different things going on but like What's going on? Is it pretty quiet? People are just praying. Is there always a worship band playing and they're singing? Is sometimes somebody up there speaking and sharing from the word? Like, kind of what what does it look like if you just were to walk in there off the street right now? What are you going to see? So, yeah, it's, I would say there's never a silent moment. <laughs> um, I would say there's always some type of uh, uh, something going on. Um and it's it's gone in in different directions as it's progressed because at first it was just you know nobody expected it to happen so they just kind of invited whatever was going to happen to happen and so worship teams would play and it would be spontaneous or people would share you know testimonies and that would be usually kind of spontaneous and people would break out into prayer and people would be coming up to the altar i would say the one consistent thing throughout is there's always people at the altar praying mm. that's one thing consistent throughout um as far as as how loud it is um i was just up there with uh uh, the pastor of the church I'm working at, and he he was saying that that he he expected people to be you know running and jumping up and down and and it wasn't that way, um, but there was at the same time there was a lot of worship happening and sure. um, and um, and people were I mean people were yelling and uh, <laughs> so at, at times but but for the most part it was relatively um, relatively just just restful and, and worshipful so yeah yeah i mean that's to me that is um that's encouraging to hear a lot of what i'm seeing in response to it is there's a lot of kind of cynicism there's a lot of yeah. um and i'm pretty cynical and skeptical by nature but <laughs> <laughs> so you know like and that's kind of why i wanted to read about this talk to you know somebody who's who's been there to just kind of like See, because like when you think of uh, when you think of a revival, I always think of like kind of like an old tent revival where it's like, um, this is kind of a Billy side Graham. note, but this is kind of what's that? Like Billy Graham? Yeah, yeah. Like, and the, you know, and and, <laughs> yeah. and I don't know if you've ever read. The, there's a there's an old book. I mean, it's old, you know, to me. Uh, uh, it's, it's called Stuff Christians Like, and it was kind of like the Babylon Bee before the Babylon Bee became a thing. It was just a book by a guy named Jonathan Acuff, and he's kind of poking fun at Christian culture. And there's always one that we like to laugh about. There's like one of one things that Christians love to do is planning revivals or scheduling revivals. They just, we're going to have a revival next week at such and such, you know. And it's always kind of, it's just seemed staged and choreographed, and it's kind of almost more like a show and a performance. And... And like you said, this isn't that way. They didn't plan this last Wednesday. It just kind of just happened. Yeah, right. 
I have, yeah, I have two two things I'll say on that because that that word has been jogging, you know, everybody's minds here, and and we've been like trying to grapple with what what does this mean, things like that. And two things I've walked away from this um, kind of thinking is, um, so I was in the cafeteria with one of the, with a group of my Asbury friends, and um, and I I came in just as skeptical because there was a revival in the 70s. Sure. And anytime, at least in my in my opinion, I think anytime there's something br- big that breaks out, people try to replicate it and people try to 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 make it happen again. And I'm like you, I I came thinking, okay, I hope this isn't a replication of the '70s, you know, where they're just trying to mimic something. And and so two things on that. One was I'm staying with a host family right now while I'm transitioning into this new job and. Um, and, uh, the wife, um, of the couple I'm staying with, uh, she said, if this is God at work, then this revival is not just going to stay at Asbury. Mm. And from what I've seen is God is impacting other campuses. God is impacting people from all over the country because of this revival. And I've seen revivals breaking out at, on other campuses. And it's not just Asbury's revival. It is a revival of all sorts of different places. Because, I mean, you'll you'll see college buses from six or seven different colleges at one time pulling up and... Um, and coming to see this revival. So um, it's it's pretty cool in that way. And the other thing I'll say is, um, as I was sitting with my group of friends in the cafeteria, we were talking about like, what does, what does a revival mean? And something I was, they were trying to figure that out. And something I told them was, I would use the word revival loosely, and I would just think of it as God working in lots of people's lives all at the same time. Mm. And and in the same place, too. And so, like, I that's that's the impression I've had of of what's going on. So, yeah, that it does seem like, um, you know, we can't there are some Christian words that I just don't think we can are, are going to be able to shake from our our Christianese and maybe revival is one of them. Um, but there's a lot of kind of Christian words that we have and phrases that we have that probably don't really accurately describe what we mean and and revival i think is one of those things it would be nicer if we had a a better word to describe because i do think people think revival they think a billy graham thing that's a planned event it's it's just a crazy whereas it's you know movement doesn't even really sound like the the right word but that's but i like we said like it's like it's a work of god god's doing something in a lot of people's lives and it's localized in this one area whatever you want to call that that's that's what seems what's seems happening to right that, that's mm-hmm. what seems yeah. to be happening so uh, which which is kind of odd that like why would and again myself i'm i'm a little i'm cynical why, why would we want to be cynical about that why would we want to be and it's kind of a weird thing i just throw this out there i don't know if you have any thoughts about it but like why do we as a christian community we 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 should be and, and a lot of i know a lot of people in my circles we pray for revival we ask god to send revival we ask him to move within faith. I know with your parents, I know you've you're familiar within faith. We work here in America. We're always praying, God, you know, do a work here in America, do something in America, and then something happens, and we're like, oh, that's probably fake. <laughs> it's like right. we we don't want to believe when it it happens, and and it, what is that about human nature? Why why do we do that? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. <laughs> I mean, and. And I felt I felt the same way. I can't I can't lie. I I was cynical because exiting the semester, there was nothing in me that was like, oh yeah, this is coming. You know, like there, that that just was never a thought. If you've been a listener of Faith and Focus for a while, I would encourage you to become a supporter of the ministry by becoming a monthly donor. Your generous donations allow me to continue working within faith and recording new content. You can find a link to my donation page in the show notes for this episode. Thank you. It's, I, I can't, I can't say anything about it. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's a bit like, well, yeah, you, you don't, you didn't see it coming. And this was just, I mean, you graduated just a couple months ago. So there was nothing in the air that was, it wasn't like this was a crescendo in this, in, in, in 
And so it does sound like it just came out of nowhere. Well, so my question then too is you've got friends there. Are they trying to, I mean, I know this is maybe not the right thing to do when God is doing a work, trying to analyze why it happened or how it happened, or are they, are the students or the staff thinking, you know, what was the catalyst for this? Was it, was it the speaker that was speaking at chapel? Did they say something? Was it, you know, a song that was, you know, like, are people trying to like analyze this and think what in the world brought this on? Maybe it's a good thing if people don't, because then they think, well, we just need to replicate that and try to do this again. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, but I think it's human nature to think what in the world brought this on? Cause it wasn't planned. Yeah. So yeah. What do you think? So I, um, I, what, what I guess people at Asbury would say was, we would, I mean, we they wouldn't put pin it on any particular thing, but at the same time, I mean, I was talking to a friend who's very involved in the in the um, like doing the worship at the uh, um, revival thing right now, and and she said she's not surprised that this happened. Oh. Like like there was there was no expectation for it, but at the same time, she was not surprised. And like, I mean, just being a student myself, I, I know the hearts of the faculty, the hearts of the students, um, like there's, there's always been a deep, um, desire and growth and, and just, just everything about the campus has always been aimed toward let's lift up Jesus and Mm -hmm. let's be about each other. And, and there's always been such a encouraging and, uh, culture that Asbury's, um, always kind of, um, invested in and chapel's part of that. And, um, so yes, there was no expectation for this to happen, but at the same time, lots of us weren't, or lots of the, the people at Asbury now aren't really surprised it happened because just, just the way that, Asbury functions it's it's not it's not quite like it was but at the same time we're they're still trying to operate in the same uh state of mind and the same um uh just just right alongside what God's doing so um okay so that's an interesting dynamic too that I think adds I don't want to say adds credibility like you know because I don't want to make it sound like we're coming at it like we're skeptical or cynical, but I think people are that way. That kind of adds like another layer to to show like this is actually God working because I'm I am very skeptical. And I think this is where people tend to be skeptical of things like this, where things just seem super spiritual. They just, you know, whereas it, it seems like God, not that God can't do just crazy off the wall stuff. He obviously does, but it often seems like he works through, again, I don't want to say a process or a system, but you know, if people are praying for a movement of God and a work of God and for God to work in in people's lives, and they're just continually walking with God and being faithful, then when God moves, it's, we're always like, wow, I, I can't believe God did that, but we are so are not necessarily surprised because it's what we've been praying for. So this just based on what you've described as this is the tenor of the campus and in the Christian community there all the time. Now it's just more so. So it's like, yeah, this is, it's not surprising because this is what we've been praying for and desiring, but now it's happening. So, okay, it's happening. Like the kind of like, a wave that will crash up from an ocean. It's like, you know, waves come. That's what oceans do. But okay, if you're a surfer, it's like, all right, here comes the wave. It's not surprising. It's what we've been waiting for, but all right, let's ride it now. And and, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you said something too, uh, um, the Christian community is wanting to uh, lift up Jesus. That's just kind of the atmosphere. So it's not necessarily surprising. I, I don't know if you've seen this in anything that you've read, I thought this was really good, though, and I'll just throw it out there for people listening that uh, may not have heard this yet, but also just to keep in mind with what's going on at Asbury and then just to hear you kind of your thoughts on this. Based on what we've already said, I'm assuming you're going to probably agree with this, but uh, this is from an article by a guy named Denny Burt, and he he's speaking from Jonathan Edwards. So this was back, you know, when there was a lot of these kind of revivals that would break out. Um, the 
great enlightenments, those in the 1800s and stuff like that. But Jonathan Ed- Edwards says, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit. So I guess that kind of speaks to, you know, hey, it's okay to be a little cynical, just mm-hmm. to yeah. um, see whether they're from God, because many false prophets have gone into the world. Jonathan Edwards offers nine signs that are no sh- sure sign of revival, followed by five signs that are true evidence of God's work. So he says, signs by which not to judge the work of the spirit. One, the work is unusual and extraordinary. Two, it produces bodily or emotional effects. It occasions a great deal of noise about religion. Great impressions are made on the imagination. One means one means used is setting an example or following another. It is accompanied by a great imprudence and irregularities in conduct. It is intermixed with errors in judgment or delusions of Satan. Some who are worked upon at first later fall away. And nine, it is promoted by ministers who insist on the terrors of God's holy law. So he says, okay, there might be some of those things, like there's a lot of noise and stuff like that and talk about religion, but those are not the things by which we're supposed to judge. Oh, there's a lot of just activity going on and people are shouting and screaming about Jesus. This must be a revival. He says those aren't not signs, but he says scriptural evidence of a work of the spirit is one, it raises the esteem of Jesus Christ in their eyes. Two, it operates against Satan's interest by discouraging sin. Three, it causes men to have a greater regard for the Holy Scriptures. Four, it is a spirit of truth which convicts them of the gospel of truth. And five, it is a spirit of love towards God and men. So based on what you've seen, does it it sounds like it fits more that latter category. Yeah. It's not chaos. It's not noise. But Christ is being exalted. Mm-hmm. Would that would that be an accurate description? Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and to me that's encouraging. To like when I when I look at this kind of stuff, again, I look at it skeptical because I think, okay, like people just, you know, screaming about Jesus that and trying to create a fervor. But um and I'm also one too that and I'm kind of curious to know your thoughts about this and maybe we can wrap up just talking about this part of things, kind of what happens afterwards, which of course, neither you or I know what's going to happen (laughs) afterwards. (laughs) But, you know, one of the things is like, okay, well, we'll really know if it was a revival based on what happens afterwards. And, And I think there might be some truth to that, but I'm also kind of curious you know, God can work, but it's still people's decisions afterwards to say, am I going to continue on? And, you know, God may have lit this fire, but as the scriptures say, don't extinguish, you know, the spirit. So God may have started a fire in Asbury, but if people afterwards decide to say, you know what, I'm going to let this die out. I'm going to, you know, God, I guess, yeah, that was a fun time, but whatever i'll i'll come back to jesus at a later point if that's people's response then that doesn't mean what god has done it was illegitimate that's just them deciding yeah you know what that was a fun time but so my question then is like what are you hoping to to come out of this i mean obviously that's probably self-explanatory or self-evident but like, what are you hoping, or what are you expecting to see? Your your friends that are still there, are you, are are you desiring them to just go back to the way that things were? Are you wanting them to to see what God is going to do in their lives? Are they going to take on the world for Jesus? Is there a new Billy Graham uh, out of this? You know, so uh, so yeah. so what are you hoping to come out of this? Obviously, you're hoping not hoping people just fall away from the faith and and we go backwards. But what what are you yeah. hoping to see out of this? Yeah, absolutely, I. Um, I mean, I just kind of would go back to what, instead of calling it a revival, I would just going back to God working in the lives of people all at the same time. And all, all I would care to, for it to come out of this is that whatever God is calling each individual to, that they would like commit to it and stick to it. I mean, there's nothing anybody has done that's anything special or anything new. And so 
it's it's all just dependent on God and we just we we can't add to it or take away from it and so that's why the cynicism and the positive reactions any post on Facebook it, it's doesn't matter it doesn't matter in fact the 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 time I spent worshiping in the chapel there was there was somebody um, leading worship um, and she said a really really good word um she said um she said the the purpose of the chapel that we're in right now and the time that we're spending right now is not to post on social media it's not to test our, text our friends it's not to text our family it's to worship Jesus right now and so any distractions that are in the way we need to remove them and and part of those was were 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 our phones and and was was part of that part of that was social media and with such a buzz with such a buzz around what's going on, it's hard to keep the right focus and it's hard to maintain what God is doing when, <laughs> when it's when it's bringing so much attention. And so sure. I, I think there's a balance to, to how much do we advertise this and how much do we just let it be what it is and, and just praise God in, in, in what he's doing because um, I think it's going to die out when we make it about the wrong thing. Mm. And and that's okay. I mean, God has done what he's what he's purposed to do anyways, but um but um I I think I think I think what was so special about it for me was that it was a time that so many people from all different places were just taking time out of their lives to worship God. And, mm-hmm. and, and it impacted me when I was just able to spend a couple hours in the sanctuary, just worshiping, not having to focus on a bunch of other things. And, um, and God pressed on some heart, on my heart, a lot of things that I had been, um, distracted with and things that I have, um, fallen short in. And I would have never realized it had it not been for me taking away some time of my day. And um, and and part of that is because so many other people are are doing the same thing. And so the the very the very thing that that the the very reason it's so great is because so many people all around are coming can also be the main distraction. Sure. <laughs> so so it's um it's it, it's it's a cool thing. It's a cool thing that that's happening. So. Yeah, that yeah, that's another thing that's just so en- encouraging to hear is is just this attitude that it's not this is an extraordinary event because it's happening to so many people at the same time in the same place. It's localized, but the spirit of what sounds like it's coming coming out of it is it's it's more of like a renewal to what in a, in a, almost like a reminder to everyone that this is what it's about. Like so, going forward, this is not something special that fifty years from now, s- graduates from Asbury are you know seventy seventy five years old, and their life is stagnant, and they're thinking back fifty years ago when Jesus did something really amazing, and that was it. It's a kind of a reminder that this is what the Christian life is. It's worship. It's it's an emphasis on Christ. It's not a focus on the things of this world. Let's put those distractions aside. It's confessing one to another. It's it's praying with one another. It's it's all of these things that the New Testament tells us that this is what the body of Christ is supposed to be. But we forget those things, and it's almost like a, an electroshock to a large group of people. Boom! This is what it should be all the time. Now, of course. You can't run for 160 hours, you know, nonstop, you know, but it's just a reminder that this is what the Christian life is. It's not some super spiritual experience. It's this is what it is. And I think sometimes we we're asleep at the wheel thinking that, you know, we so we try to rejuvenate that revival spirit a little bit every Sunday morning. So we try to have a really good service and we try to real, you know, to shock people. So then they have the next six, seven days of their week to live off of that experience when it's just like, well, hold on, wait a second. This is what it should be all the time. Uh, just walking right. with the Lord faithfully mm-hmm. with the Lord. So, um, any, any concluding thoughts that you got, uh, Josiah, that you'd want to share, uh, about what you experienced there, what you would think listeners, obviously 
people are going to be listening to this. We don't want them to get the wrong message. Like you said, we don't want that to be a distraction to them to think that God can't do in their lives what he's doing in, in, in Asbury. So any concluding thoughts that you would that you would have? I mean, I I think I think I've pretty much said the gist of 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 what I understand of, of what's going on. But um, I just I, one thing I thought was was interesting was um, I I wasn't there for the chapel that sparked uh, the whole revival thing, but I I was able to listen back to it, and um, I just thought it was kind of kind of funny. Just at the end, he he just kind of um, ended with a prayer that said start a new thing and and bring a revival to this you know to here and that was the prayer that he ended with and then therefore the the students came up and they asked for prayer and it never stopped so um i i I mean when you were there you would never know but looking back on it it's just hilarious that that god just answered that one so clearly so Sometimes, sometimes we ask for things and then God answers, and it's like, well, hold on, wait a second. Like, and, yeah. And I, and I wonder, I wonder if the president of the school is thinking, you know, maybe we won't have that speaker back asking for that prayer again because that kind of disrupts yeah. our campus. Uh, <laughs> students need to get back to class. Yeah. yeah back. So, so funny. Yeah. So, well, Josiah, I really appreciate your time. I appreciate you sharing. Um, not every one of us is gonna be able to travel to Asbury, but not every one of us needs to because the same spirit that's working. And Asbury College lives within each one of us, and he can work here where I'm at, where you're at, where anyone who's listening may be at. So uh, I guess that would be my prayer, and, and, I, and I'm assuming your prayer as well, is that revival will just happen in our lives, and, and a work of God will work wherever we're, wherever we're at. So, so I really appreciate your time, and uh, stay in touch. I've got your number. You've got my email. Let me know if anything changes. If things start to fall apart in Asbury... I'm going to commission you to go back down there and set things straight. <laughs> Easy. Hey, here's the other thing is the the husband of the host family I'm with, he was like, is it just a coincidence that this broke out the semester after you graduated? I was like, come on, man. Like, hey, I went yeah. there planting seeds. All right. Yeah, they so, they just they just had to get the gardeners out of there. Your sister and you just let's clear out this the, the leaven or whatever. And the, yeah, the, apparently I was holding them back or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, that's awesome. Well, I appreciate it, Josiah, and I appreciate you sharing uh, your experience down there. Thank you. All right, thank you. While Faith and Focus is a ministry of mine as a missionary within faith, the views and opinions expressed, believed, or lived out by myself or those appearing in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the position, beliefs, or opinions of in faith as a mission.